HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, the Hopkinton Women's Club hosted their annual awards luncheon. Hopkinton Little League officially kicked off the 2018 season with the annual parade and ceremony. And the Board of Health hosted two public hearings regarding plastic bag use and increasing the tobacco age. But first, here are some of the latest happenings in town you should know about. The Hopkinton Women's Club hosted their annual Meet the Candidates Night. Here is a look at the forum as we met some of the candidates up for this year's town election. From my experience, I've been a union representative for the IBW, that's the electrical workers, for 20 years. So I handled their mediation and their arbitration grievances. I was a delegate for them for the international in Washington, D.C., and I did some lobbying work at the uh, State House for about 10 to 12 years. So I have experience in negotiation and mediation, and I think that with that education that I have, the experience I have with the IBW, I can bring it, add it to the table for the Board of Selectmen, and that will be my useful tool, and that's what I can bring. Uh, I'm running for my fourth and final term because there's a lot going on in Hopkinton, to Patrick's point, and there are a few key projects that I'd like to see move forward. And, and get finalized. Uh, the downtown quarter project I think is a great opportunity for Hopkinton to put a great stamp on our historic downtown. Uh, the turf fields project is a great opportunity for all of the community to invest in and enjoy a great new asset uh, for our children. We've got great schools in Hopkinton but we need great assets to go along with those schools and facilities. And I obviously want to keep an eye on the fiscal uh, situation here in Hopkinton. Community service is something that's been ingrained in me from a very young age. I learned a lesson from my dad who came here from Pakistan, immigrated to the United States, recruited, and he had the opportunity to go to some of the top hospitals in Boston. But instead he chose to come to Milford and serve the underserved communities in an effort to help all around him. What he taught me is that we have family and we have community. Serving on the board this past year has been a great opportunity to do that and I want to continue next year and the next few years. Now, becoming an, assessor, becoming an assessor takes some training. I had to learn about property valuation process and the oversight that we get from the Mass Department of Health. I had to learn about exemptions and abatements, and I had to learn how we determine the annual tax rate. I have satisfied a lot of people. Um, what can we expect of you as Library Board of Trustee? And I want to tell them I'm concerned about the accessibility of the library. The library hours are 10 to 8. Um, a lot of people work 8 to 5. That means they get home, they have supper, that leaves them only an hour to go to the library. I'd like to see them have the library open until 10 o'clock one day a week. I've served three different terms as uh, a member of the Board of Trustees. I was appointed by the selectmen to the very first Board of Trustees. I've been elected a couple of times. Um, the library is kind of a passion for me. Um, it's been a big part of my life ever since I was a little kid. And uh, being part of this board means an awful lot to me. Um, I served as co-chairman for one term. I'm a member of the Friends of the Library, and I've been a volunteer at the library for over 12 years. I want to thank the town meeting from last year that preserved our constable positions, uh, overwhelmingly so. We have three elected constables, three appointed constables, and we have a full flight of constables for the first time in a long time. And um, I'm glad that uh, I am running again for re-election. 
that there is a delicate balance between the growth in Hopkinton's residential and commercial communities. And as a member of the planning board, I look forward to the challenge of finding this balance through further exploring Hopkinton's built and natural environment. As an architect the member and a member of the historic district, downtown revitalization, and zoning advisory committees, I've written and used codes for both residential development and commercial um, occupancies. I have a solid understanding of how they impact people and individual at the individual and community level. Uh, I joined um, the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, about four years ago. Um, because the town was looking for volunteers for the various boards and I wanted to help. I'm an attorney by trade, a uh, patent attorney, and uh, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals sounded like a, a good fit. Um, I've done that now for four years, including serving as chairman for three, and um, I've seen firsthand some of the challenging uh, planning decisions that the towns had to make. I approach the challenges of town growth without preconceived notions, but rather with the ability to listen to the many perspectives and work with people to develop solutions. I earned my bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and an MBA from Boston University. I've been working in project management in the biopharmaceutical industry for the last 25 years, leading teams to plan and accomplish multi-million dollar, multi-year projects. With my oldest now in college and my younger son a sophomore, I'm excited for the chance to give back as a member of school committee, and I'd like to tell you why. First, having gone from K to 12 with my older son, I feel like I have a much better perspective and understanding on how all the pieces of the puzzle fit together to prepare our students for post-secondary life. Second, we are at a time of transition in our district, with a new superintendent coming on board and our district-wide six-year strategic plan soon up for renewal. The strategic plan guides each school's improvement plan and also our investments. I love young people. They are, after all, our future unfolding. And I am cognizant that the better we support and serve them now, the sturdier the groundwork for our future. Call me quaint, but I think discussions of education should remain student-centered. It's easy to lose sight of the individual students' needs and strengths when poring over labyrinthine school budgets, but I believe that's actually our responsibility. This past Monday, the Board of Health hosted two public hearings. One of the proposals is to ban plastic bag use at retail and grocery stores in town, and the other public hearing discussed increasing the tobacco age from 18 to 21. Here is a look at Monday night's public hearings. Each person must identify oneself. Each person. This past Monday night, the Hopkinton Board of Health hosted two public hearings. The first public hearing was to consider adoption of a reduction in single-use plastic checkout bags. The regulation bans single-use plastic checkout bags at any retail or grocery store within the town of Hopkinton. Yeah, I think on, on some levels we're sort of behind a lot of other communities as far as like uh, a lot of these ocean communities. So for example, um, my sister and brother-in-law live on Block Island and they have recently banned plastic straws and also balloons. They're not allowed to release balloons at weddings and stuff. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, and well, the reason with that, they don't mind regular balloons, but helium-filled balloons, they go up in the air and they land in the ocean. And my brother-in-law is actually a professional fisherman, so he said, yeah, they show up in my nets. Um, so, you know, something as simple as plastic bags, it's really a first step, I think, towards doing the right thing. After no protest at the public hearing, the Board of Health voted unanimously to pass the regulation. To close the hearing for a vote. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? Second. All right. What? No, I said all right. Motion to approve the regulation. Oh, well, that would be the second. I'll well, move to approve the regulation as written. Thank yes. You. Second. Okay. So there we have it. There we it's have done. it. Done. It's done. Done. The motion passes. We the Board of Health will be enforcing authority to ensure that all retail and grocery store businesses within Hopkinton comply with the regulation. Fines will be administered for violations, $100 for the first violation, $200 for the second violation, and $300 for the third violation. The regulation is expected to go into effect January 1st, 2019.
The second Board of Health public hearing discussed increasing the purchase age of smoking and tobacco products from 18 to 21. The proposed regulation also includes non-tobacco nicotine delivery products such as electronic cigarettes and nicotine vaporizers. Several residents spoke in favor of the proposed regulation. Okay. I am in fifth grade and moved from Connecticut in August 2016. Last year in my fourth grade health class, I learned that Hoffman Kid is not in the tobacco toy illness. After that class, I came home and went and wrote a letter to our town and selectmen asking for support of getting Hoffman Kid on the tobacco toy illness. As you may know, the selectmen invited me to their meeting. I shared my letter there. They supported looking into making this happen. As follow-up shared, the Board of Health is the place to start. I am here today because I believe that is important to our town. Tobacco is not good for your health and other people's health. I learned that kids who start smoking at a very young age do stick with it. And I think that we should all be 21 in order to buy tobacco, but hope that no one will ever buy, want to buy tobacco and make people's health at risk from smoking. It could make anyone sick and get lung cancer. Please help thinking get on the Tobacco 21 list and please try getting this law passed in Hopkinton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Logan. Thank you. That was extremely well written and I appreciate your input tremendously and having you know two teenagers myself I see this and it's not so much the cigarettes as it is the e-cigarettes the e it's the jeweling um, it's become a massive problem and every town around us with the exception of Milford all of our other neighboring towns have all gone to 21 so what has happened Hopkinton is now the place to go everyone knows go to mobile in Hopkinton on 85 it's right off the highway they're gonna sell to you if you're under age so as soon as I heard that as a parent of two teenagers um, and since it's 18 and so many of the high school kids are 18 you actually have this whole secondary market going on at the high school now where you have seniors buying up the stock at you know at the local gas station and selling them to other kids in the high school and I do think the two things here what was missing in our law was anything around vaping or e-cigarettes it was only old tobacco transmission, so we've amended, not only is the age raised from 18 to 21, but the regulation is amended <coughs> to include those non-tobacco products. Mm -hmm. So it's a twofer. And it was then passed unanimously by the Board of Health. We've heard from everyone that we're going to hear from. The proposal also adds all non-tobacco nicotine delivery products to current tobacco regulation and laws in Hopkinton. The date the regulation will go into effect was amended to July 1, 2018. Is it a bylaw or regulation? Regulation. regulation. Approves the regulation um, as amended and rewritten to include non-tobacco products and raising the age to 21, mm -hmm. um, effective July 1, 2018. I second that. Fantastic. Aye. Aye. Excellent. Wonderful. Coming up next on HCAM News, we'll take you to the Hopkinton Women's Club Annual Award Luncheon and the kickoff to the 2018 Little League season. Plus, Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more on the way. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. This past week, the Hopkinton Women's Club hosted their annual award luncheon. At the luncheon, the Women's Club awarded three Hopkinton High School students for their efforts inside and outside the classroom. So the luncheon is basically um, to honor students from the high school for a variety of reasons. The first one is a Mary McDonough Community Service Award, and that's awarded to a senior who has um, gone above and beyond uh, in the area of community service. 
and this year's recipient was Zach Sisiski, who's going to Georgetown, and he has been an outstanding volunteer in so many ways, Special Olympics, just to name a few, for the past four years of high school. The second award is uh, a Mass Style Leadership Award, and it pays for a three-day leadership conference for students who uh, demonstrates leadership qualities and who would benefit from honing um, skills in that area. And the third award is uh, the, um, for a student who uh, faces challenges and um, really rises uh, to uh, above and beyond um, when, they're, when they have obstacles and they've overcome them. Um, so those are basically the three awards and um, this year we were lucky to have three students that were very, very deserving. Today we're going to be presenting three awards. The first will be our um, Must Star Award, then our Junior Endeavour Award, and finally the Mary McDonough Award. So I'd like to begin with the Mass Star. The Mass Star Award is given to the sophomore who demonstrates strong leadership skills. This year's recipient is Molly Andrews. Molly, please come up and join us. She's quite impressive, so I'd like you all to look at her. When I contacted the counsellors to ask if they could tell me something about Molly, they told me that Molly is the captain of the Relay for Life team. She has participated in the Youth in Philanthropy Leadership Programme. She is captain of her club soccer team and a member of St John's Leadership Team. Thank you. This award is given to the student that we feel best exemplifies the word endeavour. By striving to do their best, by remaining positive and optimistic. As I've said, this is the first year this award has been given. It will be given annually to, to a high school student, and this is its first year. However, it's coincidentally, the young lady that will receive this award also received this award in the middle school the first year it was presented there. It gives me great pleasure to present the junior president's junior endeavor award and to check for $250 to Francesca Bianchi. The Mary McDonough Award is given to the high school senior for community service. Every year, Pamela and I are impressed by the sheer enthusiasm with which the applicants apply. As well as being an exceptional student with fantastic grades, this young man represents his class on the student council. He's a member of the principal's cabinet and also finds time to hold down a part-time job. This year's recipient is Zach Sazitsky. Zach, please. Zach's application for this award highlighted over 500 hours of volunteerism. And that's just in the last four years. He had over 168 hours as a coach with the Special Olympics. The one thing that the panel and I were particularly impressed by, by Zach's application, was the consistency. Some of the volunteer positions that he holds, he actually started in seventh grade and is still there now as a 12th grader, still working with the same organisation. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to say that this, as retiring president, this is my final duty for the club, and this is the nicest thing I'm asked to do all year. I'd also like to introduce, to those of you who don't know, my very able assistant. This is, this is Barbara, who is going to be the, the president, <laughs> and who is president. Thank you. a wonderful president for the last two years. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can view the entire Hopkinton Women's Club presentation on our YouTube page or website, hcam.tv. 
The beloved season opening Hopkinton Little League March from the Town Common to Carrigan Field took place this past weekend. Here is a look at the opening day festivities to officially kick off the 2018 season. It's truly a community activity, as you can tell by looking around here. We've got people from all over the town, uh, all different jobs, all different backgrounds. So it's really glad. I'm really glad that we have such an inclusive group here. Um, I'm really glad that we can have so many people participating in this great sport, uh, baseball and softball. Um, so thank you all for coming out today. Uh, I'm Jason Mahone, by the way. I'm the president of Hopkinton Little League. I'm one of about 300 volunteers that helps get this thing on on the road every year. Um, so whether you are uh, a board member or a coach or just a parent, um, there's always stuff that needs to get done. So please, if you're not already involved, feel free to raise your hand and help out. <laughs> now somebody who is here today, and he's, oh he's good, he's not trying to hide. Keith Shevry, come on up here. Organizing all our information. So all you coaches who filled out coaches evaluations or helped out at uh, fall evaluations, He's the guy who compiled all that information, made sure everybody was prepared and everybody was organized to have a great time, um, crunched all those numbers, all that kind of stuff. And he coached, tons of coaching. Um, so it, we're sad to have him moving on. Uh, and personally, um, I relied heavily on his advice and experience, so I'm very sad to see him moving on. Uh, but thank you, Keith. And uh, we have a couple of party gifts for you there. Thank you very much. Um, Eight U Sparkler champs are over here on my right. Stand up, guys, give us a wave. Scott Sensities, team. Nice job, fellas. Okay, on three, let's see a first pitch, okay? One, two, three, go. Nice job. Let's hear it for him. Uh, all you younger kids want to stick around, we're going to have relay races and wiffle ball home run derby over on Carrigan 2. And that's about it. Welcome to your 2018 season. Thanks, everybody. Responsibilities, uh, your role as the president of Hopkins. Sure, it's sure it's uh, really being president of Hopkins and Little League is a little bit like running a small business. Uh, you're responsible for everything, soup to nuts, uh, making sure there's uh, bases for instructional level kids and baseballs and bats for the majors kids and uh, softball uh, as well. We have about 450 baseball players, 250 softball players. Um, we are very excited. Uh, to get the 2018 season underway. Um, we run six fields that we're pri uh, primarily responsible for. Um, field maintenance is a, a big part of the program. Um, we have a lot of volunteers who help out with that. We could always use more. Uh, and that's a big part of the job too, is making sure we have enough volunteers to help out with everything. Um, but it's a great program. The kids have a lot of fun. Um, and that's the main goal is uh, whether they're a great player or it's their first time out playing, uh, we want them to enjoy themselves. That's the, the primary goal. And if someone wanted to volunteer, how could they do so? Where could they contact uh, Go to our website, um, hopkintonlittleleague.org. Um, our email address is on there, Hopkinton Little League uh, website. Uh, excuse me, uh, email is on there. Uh, or, or just grab one of the coaches. Uh, grab If you're a parent, grab your coach. Tell them you want to volunteer and help out, and they'll, they'll point you in the right direction. Talk to anybody on the board. Um, we have about 30 board members, um, so there's a lot of different ways. Just reach out, grab us. We're willing to help, have you help. We'd love to have your help. And lastly, this is your uh, second season doing the opening day. Uh, how's this day for you? I know the kids really enjoy it. I love it. I love it. Uh, it's, we've been really lucky weather-wise. Um, it's always good to be getting started with baseball or softball, um, and we've been really lucky with the weather the last two years, especially after this year. 
it was such a mess on Marathon Monday, just you know, less than a week ago. Uh, to be here on a really sunny blue sky day is really great. All right, well, we wish you the best of luck this season. Thank you very much. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, April 27th at 5 p.m., local artists and musicians gather to share their work in a special open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with Board of Health member Michael King about the dangers of ticks on a brand new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. Um, so you can have people spray, um, so a company can come and spray those two compounds around the perimeter of your yard. Um, there's also a central mass mosquito control. They'll come and spray. Um, they come for free. They too. will come for free. Yep, they came and to my house last year. We have year. them every year. It works wow. great. Um, they're spraying that compound that I spoke about before uh, to get rid of mosquitoes, but it also you know, it, will kill ticks. So. It does kill ticks? Does yes. it kill or, or repel? It kills them. I, oh, it does kill yeah. them. I kills thought it repelled them. Yep. No, it oh. kills so them. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. On Monday, April 30th at 6.30 p.m., get yourself ready for the annual town meeting with EHOP's Know Your Vote, live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, May 1st at 8 p.m., members of the Bay Path Humane Society educate the community on dogs and the many lessons and tricks in dog training on a brand new episode of HCAM TV special. On Wednesday, May 2nd at 7 p.m., the hopeful candidates for town office meet to debate the many issues concerning our town on the HCAM debates, live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, May 3rd at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Girls Softball vs. Westwood game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to take a look at upcoming events in town and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.